Hey everybody, this is Annie Finch, and this is a supplemental video to my book of Poets Craft. Today we're going to be talking about scansion, and to prepare I recommend that you read in the third section of the book. You don't have to read the other stuff first if you don't want to, or if you have a copy of A Poet's Ear, you'll find it's the same thing. Uh, you can just start at the beginning of the book. If you have a poet's craft, turn to part three, breathing poems, and you'll go to the first, uh, read the first chapter or skim it, and it will show you how to hear accents and recognize accent, which is the foundation of meter, the foundation of sketching. And then you'll go to chapter 12, um, Please read chapter 12 in preparation for this video. And we are going to be focusing on the scansion part on page 322, how to scan a poem. This is, in a way, the it's the key of writing in meter, and in a way it's one of the most fundamental and tricky things in, in the whole book in terms of being something that it helps to have somebody walk you through at the beginning. Um, poets didn't need to learn this. I'm asked this question a lot. They didn't need to learn it consciously in the olden days when poetry was more oral, more in the body. Um, it was just kind of something you inherited. It came, came with poetry. But since the invention of printed printing, the printed page, uh, poetry has become a lot more page dependent and a lot of poetry is not in meter. So some of us have kind of lost touch with how to do it instinctively, so some, sometimes we need to learn it again. Um, but it's still in your body, so it's really more a matter of recognition, usually, than of actually having to learn an elaborate thing. Um, you'll find that um, one way or another, you will probably get right into it. Some, some people... Uh, I, I discuss in the book there are different ways that different people like to approach it, some more kinetically, some more uh, analytically, but uh, this video should help. Okay, so I recommend you uh, be sure you start with a metrical poem. You'll find in A Poet's Craft there are lots and lots and lots of poems in different meters, and you can just... Um, you know, here, this one, for example, you can find iambic poems all over the place, for example. And the next, in the next few chapters, there's lots of poems in meter to choose from. So start with a poem in meter. You can actually scan poems that aren't in meter. You can scan anything, but it's much easier to scan something that was written in regular meter. So you'll find it more satisfying at the beginning. Okay, so let's take a line like this. scan a line. Okay, we're going to scan this and we're going to use a process that's in three steps. It's the best method I've found to make sure that you're actually hearing because the point of scansion is to listen and hear how, how poetry works. So um, you want to find a method that allows you to really listen deeply and not just think to yourself, oh, it must be in this meter and go ahead and put it on uh, automatically or sort of out of the box. That's not going to help you. You need to extract the sound from the poem, from the line. And this method is the best way I know to do that. So it has three steps and it has three tools. And the first tool we're going to use, uh, I call it the wand. It's a nickname I have for it. It's a a simple nicknames. Sometimes people call it a stress mark or there's various fancy names for it, but I like to call it a wand. And the first step is simply to put in the wands that mark this and that will mark the stresses. So everywhere you hear a stress syllable, and you know from chapter 11 a stress syllable is longer, louder, or higher pitched than the other syllables around it. So I'm learning how to scan a line. If you get stuck, you can always practice the uh, shout across the room method invented by a poet named Jessica Piazza. 
to just pretend you're shouting to someone you know across the room, I'm learning how to scan a line. And you'll find yourself exaggerating exactly the syllables that should be stressed. So where do you hear them? I'm learning how to scan a line. We'll put a wand on the first one. And if you thought learning, that's exactly right. And if it's a word of more than one syllable, you can look it up in the dictionary and double check yourself. I'm learning how to scan a line. I'm learning how to scan a line. Remember, you can always shout it across the room. I'm learning how to scan a line. I'm learning how to scan a line. Okay, so how, it's not as big of a stress as learning, but it gets a stress. Now, how do you know that's stressed? Look at the syllables next to it. The ing is very small and soft and short, and so is the two. Ing how to. You can see the how is more stressed than what's right next to it. That's what matters. Don't worry if it's more stressed than the learn. It's more stressed than what's next to it. That's all that matters. Okay, scan. I'm learning how to scan a line. Scan definitely. And learn verbs usually get a nice strong stress, second only to well nouns and verbs usually both get stressed about the same. Um Maybe nouns a little more, I think. I'm learning how to scan a line. So that's the last one, okay. So in here there are four strong syllables that get wands. I'm learning how to scan a line. That's step one, put in the wands. Step two involves a second tool, which does not have a, any satisfactory name in English, so I have nicknamed it the cup. And wands and cups. Okay, I'm learning how to scan a line. We're going to put cups on top of all the syllables that don't have wands on them. I'm learning how to scan a line. These are just all the other syllables, so by definition they're going to be unstressed or lightly stressed. Obviously everything is stressed a little or we couldn't even hear it at all, but they're, they're called unstressed and uh, they're very lightly stressed compared to the wands. So we put one here. We put one here, and finally here. Okay, third step is foot boundary. So the foot boundary goes, every time you see a repeating pattern, you put in a foot boundary. So you can see something repeating here, right? And you, it's good to put it right down through the word, breaking the syllables. I'm learning how to scan a line. So you see the same thing repeats four times. That's what the foot boundary does. Very important. Some of people leave out this step. Don't leave it out. It becomes very important sometimes when you get into more complex stuff. So always get in the habit of putting in your foot boundaries. And then you can see that this is an extremely regular rhythmical line. It repeats the same pattern every time. Even though in this case it's in the middle of a word, it doesn't matter. The metrical pattern does not pay attention to words, word boundaries. It only pays attention to the repeating rhythms. Okay, so here's another line for us. I hear the wands, half wands, and cups. So we're going to try the same exact thing. Three steps. First the wands, then the cups, then the foot boundaries. I hear the wands, half wands, and cups. Okay, so clearly there's one on here, right? Here, on here. <laughs> and wands. Now, what the heck is going on there? I, if you get stuck, don't fret it too much. It's kind of like taking a test. Just go over to the next one that you do know. Clearly, cups is one, okay? And um, you can kind of wait on this for a minute. If you want, you can even go on to the third step, and that might help clarify the confusing part. I mean, to the second step. So let's try that. Let's go on to cups. I hear the, we're leaving this out because it's too confusing. Okay, now where, what do we see repeating? We see this repeating, 
we see this repeating, and we see there's one. So we can mark it just like we did in that line. Now this is a tricky part, half wands. What do we do with that? It kind of sounds like two stresses, right? But on the other hand, maybe this one is more stressed than the other. I hear the wands, half wands, and cups. So this one is stronger, so we give it a real wand. But this is not really a wand, and it's not really a cup either. It's more than a cup. So this is where we can use this beautiful fourth symbol. There's only four symbols you really need to scan anything. And this one is a half wand. It goes the other direction, and it's a half of a stress. So it can be very, very useful when you get into a situation where maybe some people think it's scanned, others think it isn't, or you can't really make up your mind. Some people would have no problem just calling this a cup. Other people wouldn't mind calling it a wand as well. And then you have what's called a spondy, which is a variation in the meter. But sometimes the simplest thing is just to acknowledge that there is some stress there, but not as much as you have here, 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 here. Okay, so now we have one more. Let's see. Um, we'll do this one. Okay, I'm learning to write poetry. Okay, we'll do this one again. Um, so, learning to write poetry. So, learn again. Right? I'm learning to write poetry. Okay, that's a little tricky. You might have heard one on the po pretty clearly. I'm learning to write poetry. But what's going on in here? I'm learning to, because write should really be stronger, right? To write. But if you're shouting it across the room, you're probably not going to stress that right. You're probably going to stress the two a little bit more. I'm learning to write poetry. If you really had to get that across to somebody, you'd want to stress the two to make it clear what's going on. I'm learning to write poetry, hey, you across the room. So let's say we give this one a, a stress because of that. And remembering that it is definitely stressed more than the ing, and it's all relative. What about this one? I'm learning to write poetry. It's a big, strong word, right? It's a noun. Normally it would get a wand, like if it was, I'm learning to write um I'm learning to write now or something. Or I'm learning I'm learning to write to you. I'm learning to write to you. Clearly, if there was another two there, the right would be stressed. But the Poe is so strong that I'm gonna suggest putting a half stress on the right as well. Uh, because the right is really squished in there very quickly. I'm learning to write poetry. You but it's, you're saying it so quickly that it's uh, short, and as you know, short is part of being unstressed, remember? Shorter, softer, and lower pitched is gonna be um, your unstressed syllable. So this is a sort of right in between, it's kind of a half. Okay, so then we can go back and put in the cups. We've got one here, we've got one here. Poetry, I'm learning to write poetry. Tree, that's more than that, right? It's relative. The tree is more than the F, so that gets one as well. Okay, now we're gonna put in, okay, we did step one with the wands, we did step two, and we're gonna do the step three, the foot boundaries. And we did a half wand along with the wands. Okay, foot boundaries, I'm learning to. Clearly this repeats, right? And now this might be a little confusing. Where do you put the foot boundary? So if you get confused, you can go to the end and go backwards. Go to the end, just like we did up there. Then you can see that's one. That's clearly a repeating unit, a foot. It's called a foot. Um, anything, the repeating of these magical patterns is called a foot, like it's walking, it's walking through the poem. Um, okay, right po. So here we go, right po is kind of like the others in that you have something softer and then something louder and stronger afterwards. So that's it. Uh, that's how I would scan that. Some people, again, might want to just call this a cup or a wand, which is fine too. It's subjective when you get into that sort of thing. This kind of thing is not subjective. You really, you can't just say, oh, well, I hear it with learning. The dictionary would prove me wrong there. But here, it's a matter of 
how you hear it. Do you hear I'm learning to write poetry? Or I'm learning to write to write poetry with the right very soft like a cup? Or is it in the middle? I hear it in the middle, but you could do anything you want on there. Okay, and then uh, here's, here's just one more. I'm finally learning how it's done. Okay, so we're going to do the same three steps. Step one is the wands. I'm finally learning how it's done. That's pretty clear, right? Fine. Learn how done. Okay. Step two, we put in the cups. I'm finally learning how it's done. We've got one here. I don't know what's going on there. There's two syllables there, right? Maybe some people would hear it one. Let's kind of squish that together. Finally, but most people would hear that as two syllables. Okay, this, the beauty of this is you don't have to worry about anything like foot boundaries yet because we're only on step two. So step two, we continue putting a cup on every unstressed syllable. All the softer, lower pitched, and sh shorter syllables. How it's, how it's done. So it's is another little one. Okay, now step three. Foot boundaries. I'm fine. Oh, what the hell's going on there? Okay, just leave that. We'll go to the end and start from the back. It's done. Ing how. Okay, so clearly those are two of the same pattern. It's called IMs, two IMs. I A M B, which comes from the Greek word that simply meant a metrical foot. It was a basic foot for the Greeks. Um, and the chorus used to walk along the stage as they talked in this meter. There was, well, these meters had physical movements that went with them, sort of like dance steps. I'm finally learning how it's done. Okay, so we'll look at this. This is a little different than anything else we've seen, right? We've seen a lot of plain IMs. We've seen an IM that had a half stress instead of a cup. And we've seen some... Uh, that had like a very small light syllable that had an accent. But here is the first time we've seen an extra syllable. So this is actually called an anapest. And I am is like this. And this is all right in your book. There's a whole list of all of them. But these two feet, I am's and anapests, often go together because, see, they're both rising. They both go from an unstress to a stress, from a cup to a wand cup one or cup cup one so you can easily just go ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba ba bum ba ba bum ba bum ba bum without losing your stride you can just go right along so it's not uncommon to have an anapest right here in the middle of your IMs so that's what you have okay that's it for today um later on there are other things to talk about we are not done yet, but that would be in the next chapter of the Many Voices of Iambic Meter. This is to supplement only chapter 12. Okay, have fun.